Tip number one is pretty basic and everyone knows to make a grocery budget. I don't budget week by week for my groceries. I budget monthly for them. So my budget is anywhere from $800 to $1,000. Now I know there's other people and sources that say to do $100 per person in your family, but everyone's budget is going to look different. Number two, join your local grocery store's loyalty programs. So with their savings and things, I can save money at the gas station. Like if you spend so much, you get so many rewards towards your gas. So I like to shop at Smith's for the majority of my things just so I can save on gas money. I'll end up saving all my rewards till I hit a dollar off a gallon. And with your grocery budget and gas budget, I know are much higher now. Shopping at Smith's or your Kroger's and having their rewards program with gas will definitely help you in the wallet this coming year. Tip number three, use coupons or digital coupons. I am big into the digital coupons right now. I used to be a major couponer with all the clippings. By couponing, it actually helped me start my food storage. If you'd like to see a video on how I do my food storage, I have a whole playlist for you down below. Don't buy things that you normally don't eat. Just because it's on sale, or if you can get it for free, if you can get it for free, donate it. But if it's something your family doesn't need, don't store it up. A great app that I'm starting to get into more is Ibotta. So you can hop on there, click on the savings you want. If you ended up buying any of these items at your store, all you have to do is scan the barcode and you can get money back. It's a great app. This video is not sponsored. I'm just handing you over all the tips that I have found. Number four, compare prices at other stores. You need to do a little homework. So in my area, I'm comparing store prices with Macy's, Walmart, Smith's, and there's a couple of other stores, but they're a little further from me. So when it comes to building up my food storage and I am seeing a sale, I'll head to Macy's and Smith's over Walmart sometime. Not all the time will those stores have a better deal than Walmart, but I'm always looking and comparing prices. Tip number five I have for you is join a wholesale club. And you're probably thinking, how in the world is that gonna save me money? Well, yes, you will have to pay a store membership fee. You're gonna save money in the end. So a lot of them have programs where you can get money back, Costco does. I don't even have to pay for my membership fee. When I use the executive membership, I get every so much money that you spend at the store, you get money back and ends up paying for my membership every year. And then there's usually a little money left over for me to do some shopping in the store. So some of the things that I could save on using a club membership is toilet paper, paper towels, and a lot of canned goods and medicines. I also noticed that I could save a lot of money if I buy some of my poultry there, my cheeses, and my dairy. Let's talk some more about cheese. This cheese here I got at Costco. It was actually cheaper in this 40 ounce than going to my local grocery store at the time and getting their 30, 32 ounce block. This is how I like doing the big block cheeses. Costco's cheese was definitely priced better than my local grocery store. But then I noticed that at the bulk store, buying my mozzarella shredded like this actually saves me a lot of money. So I use a lot of mozzarella. I use it in a ton of recipes. What I'll do is I will usually take one and put it in the freezer. This is good till February, 2022. I will keep both in the fridge until I'm ready to freeze it, throw one in the freezer and have this for all our cooking. It's great because it's already shredded. I don't have to do the work. And then all I have to do is bang this out when it's frozen and use as much as I need to in my recipes. I also love getting the Mexican style cheese now like this because I don't need to shred it. This was actually a good price. It came in two bags as this. So the price at the time with what was happening in my stores for cheese and at the time this was better. Definitely look, compare prices with your stores, your bulk stores, Usually on some things will be your better bet than the grocery store and with how much cheese my family goes through At that moment of time of buying it was better at the bulk store buying things like snacks in bulk will save you more money It is cheaper for my family to buy granola bars like this from Costco than it is to go buy a pack of Six or eight that's on the shelf. This is 64 bars for eight dollars. I'm saving way more money buying the granola bars in this bulk than in a normal box at the grocery store. This is my food storage room. If you'd like to see more videos on this and how this can help save you every month, click on the videos below. And I noticed that during certain times of the year, it's cheaper to buy my vegetables at the bulk store than the normal grocery store. With inflation going up, I highly suggest you stock up on some vegetables. 
green beans, carrots, whatever your family likes. When things get kind of tight, it's always good to have canned vegetables on hand. Hey, tip number six is pretty obvious. Purchase sale items. Yes, we know that that tip is pretty dang obvious, but during certain times of the year, when you buy things that are on sale, stock up a little more. So if you're going in needing one thing, buy maybe two more. This will help build up your storage. So the next time you need it, you're not buying it at full price. Okay, so let's say right now, I'm filming this at Christmas time. You might be seeing some sugars on sale, maybe some brown sugar, mini marshmallows, cinnamons, spices, things like that. So if it's on sale now, grab one when you need it and put two in your pantry. Same goes for the summertime when there's sales on chips, buy 10 for 10, or kids crackers or goldfish, if you have little ones that love goldfish. If you're seeing 10 for 10, that might be a good time to stock up to have on hand, especially when you know how fast your kids can go through those. Tip number seven, make your grocery list and stick to it. Now this is gonna be hard. If you're an impulse buyer, like I can be sometimes, then may I suggest that you do store pickup. Sam's Club does store pickup, Walmart does store pickup. That will help you not to add more things into your cart and save a dollar. I highly suggest that. That's why lately I've been using Instacart and Shipt because I don't wanna go into the store, one, because I wanna save more time getting things done here, and two, I can really stick to my list. But honestly, I know me, I'm an impulse buyer. I'll see something and be like, ooh, that's yummy. Ooh, I can make that later down the road. I'll throw it in my cart. My grocery bill has gone up sometimes by $100. So if I know I, I wanna stay away, especially right now during the holidays, I will have my, my groceries delivered to me. It's easier to stick to the list. The next tip I have for you is to not be so loyal to a brand. Store brand is just as good as the main brand that you see on the shelves. And a lot of time those companies partner up and it's actually the same thing. So don't be afraid to go generic or store brand. I like to go that route when it comes to cereals, but I noticed that I also love to buy my main cereal is Cheerios at the bulk stores. But when it comes to in the grocery stores, mainstream just looking, I will go for the generic store brand of all the fun cereals. I'll also do that with my dairy products, like with cream cheese and ricotta, sour cream, cottage cheese, I will get the store brand. And my last tip for you is to buy your meat in bulk. This has saved our family so much money. Okay, recently we had pigs over the summer that was interesting. Our family raised the pigs. They were at my brother-in-law's house and so we got the pigs slaughtered. We were able to have pork chops, ham steaks, ham, ham bones all in here. So in our freezer. So may I suggest if you don't want to raise the pig yourself, find someone that can. But the biggest thing that we save money on is going in on a cow. So our family has found a local provider who raises cows and they're actually like a few hours away from us but we have a local butcher that will butcher it for us and we pick it up there so we have used the same butcher and the same farmer for years and it has saved our family so much money let me give you an idea of how much money we got a half a cow this year i believe last year as well here are the three bags that our portion of the cow came in and so we're, we all take inventory of what we have. So I'm gonna go through, count how many pounds of ground beef we have, roasts, steaks. If someone doesn't have enough of something, we'll switch things around. Um, but they try, the company tries to divide it um, equally among the uh, families. So here is my She's in Her Apron planner. And in my planner, I have a master freezer inventory. So what I'm going to do is use this for the cow and try to check off as we use it. Um, and I always do an inventory of a cow and how much we have, but it's nice to have it in the planner now so I can see and I'll, we'll try our best to keep track of it. So I'm going to put what it is here and how many I have.
so here's what I did. So when I go to use one, I could go and cross it out. But at least I have an idea of how many things that we have. So we got have out of that cow 71 pounds of ground beef. So let me give you an idea of how much this can save. We paid $2.85 a pound for all that meat. That's steaks, that's roasts, that's ground beef, beef stew meat, patties, you name it. $2.85 a pound. And the prices have not gone up that much over the years. Back in 2015, we were paying $2.70. And then 2020, it went up only five cents. And then from 2020 to this year, it went up 10 cents. You're kidding. So at Macy's, a local grocery store, I went and peeked in on their ground beef. So I'm noticing $6.49 a pound, $3.49 a pound, just depending on the, the grade of it. If you could look and find a local farmer that you can get your beef from, it's so, so worth it. And sometimes even cheaper if you go to the butcher and they will sell some of the meat that you could go there and pick up your meat as well. So this has saved our family so much money. If you can't get your bulk meat in that way, may I suggest a few outsources that you can do to have it sent to you. We really like Butcher Box. Again, this is not sponsored. Their meats are so good. The ribeye steak is amazing. Their bacon is so good. And then there's also Omaha steaks. Those are delicious. Those are two other ways that you can get some yummy meats delivered to you. So when you're buying your own meats, ground beef at your grocery store, I highly suggest that you get a food saver and use that to store it up and put it in the freezer. If you don't have one or can't afford to get one, then I suggest that you get the air out as best as you can if you're using Ziploc bags and use it within less than a year so you don't get freezer burn. Inflation is not going to slow down anytime soon, I'm afraid, and so we need to do things that will help bring food to the table for the family. Well, friends, if you have any tips that can help us right now during this time of inflation and how we could save money at the grocery store, please leave those tips down below. I know we all can benefit from them. Bye.